hey, welcome to my kitchen. So today we're gonna make some sour cream pound cakes. Now, I'm not gonna make a full-size pound cake. I actually like to make these in more individual style servings. Okay, we're going to do the sour cream pound cake, small loaf pan, two individual size pans. One is like a little mini bun, and I'll show you that in a minute. And one is more like a whoopie pie pan. Um, and I've never done that with the pound cake before. So we're gonna see. I'm afraid it may puff up too much, but this is a very generic recipe as far as you can use it for literally anything. You can use it as a full-size bunt cake um, with like powdered sugar drizzled on top or sprinkled on top. You can also use it in a regular cake pan if you really wanted to, but it's not meant for a decorative cake. This is definitely more of just make it at home, make it for your guests, but it tastes so good. There's so much butter and so much sour cream, which is never a bad thing. So as we go through, I'm going to tell you the ingredients, but I'm also going to have them listed in the details of this video. Um, and I'll post it on social media as well. So you can always look back and just save those comments and post so that you have that recipe for you. If you are one of my sweet shop customers and used to come to me at the shop for cupcakes and goodies that I had there, this is the recipe for the little loaf pans that I used to have in the lobby that were covered in caramel icing. So if you've ever ordered those or picked them up or given them as gifts, whatever, I always had them bagged individually, that's this recipe. Now we're not doing the caramel icing today, we can do that another day, but this is the actual pound cake recipe that I used at the shop. So write it down because it's amazing and it's definitely a crowd pleaser. So to start off, I've got all my ingredients ready and measured out here. I'm actually going to start off with two sticks of unsalted butter and I've got them softened. It's actually melt a little bit in the bowl there. Totally fine. And I'm just going to dump those into my mixer. Now, as you're going to see in all my videos, I use six quart KitchenAid mixers. This recipe, you definitely do it in a four quart or a five quart. I use six quart because I'm obviously doing larger, um, batches of this normally. This is actually more family family friendly size batch. It's not going to feed a ton of people. So I'm going to put my salt and butter directly into my mixing bowl. All right, so once that's in, I'm going to go ahead and add my granulated sugar. And there's three cups of granulated sugar in this recipe. So I'm going to dump that directly in. And then I'm going to turn my mixer on like low and then I'll bump it up to like a medium low. You don't have to beat this for very long. Just incorporate that sugar into the butter a little bit. And already I love the smell of softened butter and sugar being in a mixer. Every good cookie dough starts this way. I love it. It's the greatest smell ever. All right, I'm bumping up just one more notch. So at this point, in between each ingredient or type of ingredient, like wet versus dry, you want to scrape your bowl down. So I really want to make sure that all this butter is off of the bowl. I actually bought these at Sam's Club. This is a little bit big. Again, I'm only doing larger batches. So you can always use a, a smaller spatula. But I don't like the kind that have like a scoop, like a spoon type look to them when baking because I can't sufficiently scrape the bowl down well because you get stuck in that little scoop part of the spatula. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to turn back on the lowest setting, the mix setting, and I'm going to start adding in my eggs. And there's actually going to do six whole eggs with a lot of eggs in here. It makes it very rich. I'm going to bump this up a little bit to speed the process up. I also have no patience, so I kind of, you know, speed things along when I bake. Now at this step, now that they're all incorporated, I'm actually going to bump it up another notch. I let that go for about 30 seconds and then I'll scrape the bowl down again. So now that we've got that in, I'm going to go ahead and add my sour cream. And this is one cup of full fat sour cream. Don't do the low fat on something like this. Um, I'm going to add some milk here in a minute. I am using a 2% milk. You could also use a whole milk. I don't know that I go 1% though. You do want some fat in there. So I'm going to scrape in one cup of sour cream. This is gonna make it so, so soft, and it's really gonna have a good shelf life. It's not gonna be dry or crumbly. It's just the sour cream does so much for this recipe. Okay. And total side note, but I love these little skinny scrapers. If any of you are familiar with Pampered Chef, which I'm sure most of you are, Love these. They get inside jars when I'm doing like any kind of jam filling on something. I use this to get to the bottom of the jar. Love it. 
and they're also like a flexible spatula. Okay, so once that's incorporated, again, scrape your bowl down. I know it's a lot, but it makes a big difference. Okay, now we are going to add our milk. And there's only a fourth of a cup of milk. No, nothing too much, you don't want it to be too thin, your batter. Now, I know sometimes it is really hard to find pure vanilla extract, um, or it's just really expensive. And when you're baking like this, I think it's okay to use an imitation. Now, you're not gonna wanna use imitation if you are like making icing, for instance. No, you want the real stuff. But when you're actually gonna be baking it, I think you can get away with the imitation, especially when it's the cost that it is these days. This is pure vanilla extract because that's all I use because I bake for other people. But if you're at home, use the imitation. Don't stress like that anymore. Okay, so I'm actually gonna take my three cups of all-purpose flour and this is a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda, so not much. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm actually just gonna get a fork and kind of stir that around, the baking soda, make sure it's completely incorporated. And then I'm gonna add this in thirds, roughly. Um, you can get a measuring scoop and actually do this a cup at a time if you want to. I just kinda, again, don't wanna, don't want to um, spend more time doing that. So I always just do a little bit at a time and sprinkle in, that looks about right. Now you definitely wanna start on the lowest mixing setting on your mixer at this point, the lowest setting. You don't want that flour to come flying out of the mixer at you and it will make a massive mess, trust me. And now that it's all in there and it's incorporated into the wet ingredients, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit so now I don't have to worry about making a mess. Once again, here we go. I'm gonna bump it up to the third setting on my mixer, which is number two. Is what it's, mine goes from zero to stir, and then it goes by even numbers two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is number two on the KitchenAid mixer. And we're done. That's it. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a small loaf pan. It, again, if you were a sweet shop customer, this is the size that I used to make at the sweet shop. And we got this down to the science, we made it so much. So we actually used a fairly good sized ice cream scoop. This is actually perfect for an actual single cupcake size. And you can actually buy these at like linens and things or Bed Bath & Beyond and it actually is called a cupcake scoop. So we do five of these to fill this loaf pan and it should come up to about two thirds up the sides of the pan and it puffs up above it, makes the perfect pound cake. So we're gonna do one of those. So anyway, so Regardless of which size pan you're using, even if you were to use a full size like nine inch round bump pan, you're gonna wanna spray it with some sort of cooking spray. If you're doing a loaf pan, you could actually do a butter and flour covering to keep it from sticking, but because I'm using individual ones, I'm just gonna do the spray on everything. It just makes my life easier. But you're gonna wanna make sure you coat the bottom and the sides, something like that. And also, as you watch more of these videos and the baking, I rarely ever use a whisk attachment, like ever. The only time I use that is if I am doing meringue. Um, there's just no need for it. The paddle attachment mixes the batters properly without putting so much air into them. So that's why I like these better than a whisk. Okay, so once that's scraped out, I get my spatula and again, just kind of scrape it, fold it a few times to make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom of your bowl. And then here you go. Here's my scoop. I'm going to do, like I said before, five scoops into this pan. Okay. So now that I have everything out in its own individual baking dishes, I'm actually, when you're doing this small loaves, it's a lot easier to bake on a small baking dish because I can rotate this in the pan or I can rotate this in the oven much easier than each individual one. So just make sure you kind of put a little bit of space between them so they're not right on top of each other so the air can flow around them. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so all of my items, all my different sizes have come out of the oven and are cooled. So I did 350, did not use convection, just regular 350 oven. And the whoopie pies came out first. They were right at 11 minutes. The little buns came out second. They were at 13 to 14 minutes. And these, the small loaves, were close to around 35 to 38 minutes. And how I know when they're ready is I just kind of touch the top of these. If my fingerprint goes far down, obviously they're not ready. Um, if it kind of bounces back a little bit, I think I'm good to go. I bring it out of the oven and I let it stay in the pan for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. 
Now these smaller ones, five minutes in the pan is plenty, then you can pop them out. These 10 to 15 is a little bit better. Make sure the center of those get nice and cooked. So we're gonna decorate these a few different ways. I hope you can see this. So what we're doing is the little tiny bunts I kind of played around with. This is a cream cheese icing that I just piped into the center and then I just fanned out a strawberry on top. Very easy, very simple, but cute. The whoopie pies, instead of making them into a whoopie pie by sandwiching them together, I put, again, the icing in the swirl pattern, did a caramel drizzle, and a few chocolate chips. And then we're actually going to make a glaze for the loaves. So to make the glaze, what I'm going to do, let me get all my stuff out of the way, is I've got some just 2% milk here. And this is, I didn't measure it exact. It's about a third of a cup, I would guess. And I'm just gonna add a cup at a time of powdered sugar to that. And you're gonna need more than you think. So you're gonna grab that, then just grab a fork. You can do a whisk if you want to, but you would need a really small whisk to do this, so I'm just gonna use a fork. And you're just gonna whisk all that powdered sugar in there. So let's do another cup. still is a little thin to me. So I'm going to add the rest of this, which is probably closer to a half a cup. And yes, I'm making a huge mess. <laughs> All right, so I feel like it's getting thicker now. That's better. So it's kind of like honey, is what I would say the consistency of that is. About what you want. So at this point, you can flavor it however you choose. You could just do vanilla, you could do almond, you could do lemon. I am just gonna put a little bit of vanilla in there. I'm gonna kind of stick with the classics. All right, so I've got approximately half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just gonna dump that in and again get my fork and whisk that all together. Because I used pure vanilla extract, it is colored, so it is gonna change the color a little bit. They do make clear vanilla extract, you could totally use that. Okay, so once you have that ready, you are literally just gonna drizzle it over your pound cakes. But I'm actually gonna line some paper towels underneath my cooling rack here because it's gonna get all over your counter. Just like that. Okay, and you can just keep this directly on your fork. You could also put this into a smaller Ziploc bag and drizzle back and forth like this. Most people don't care. I'm just gonna use the fork that I have. The key is to let it drip a little bit back into your bowl before you drizzle it, the way that any big chunks and clumps will come off into your bowl, and then to flip your wrist back and forth, and it will sling a little bit. Just like that, back and forth. Because you want it to come down the sides a little bit, but not so much that it makes a huge mess. Now I'm going a little slower because I want it to be a little heavier in some areas. This just adds a little bit of sweetness without overdoing it, without giving it a different flavor so it still has that true vanilla flavor. We'll do again. We're gonna go back and forth, all over the pound cake. Do another round. And if you wanted to put something on top that would kind of stick to this um, before it sets up, because the powdered sugar will make this harden up a little bit. You could, like for instance, mini chocolate chips. You could sprinkle them on at this point and they'll stick to the top of that. Totally up to you. So now that we have those done, we are going to move on to our small little butt cakes. So, like I said, I have a bag of icing here, and this is cream cheese icing. You could use whatever color icing you wanted, or whatever flavor icing you want to. You could even use chocolate. You're gonna put your piping bag, or if you're using a Ziploc, you would do this too, right down the center, squeeze, and spiral up just slightly. And you're going to do that to all of them, regardless of what topping you're gonna to use. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna top these with strawberries. So I've tried to go through my strawberries and find some of the smaller ones. And I'm just gonna create a simple fan. This is kind of an old school thing to do, but I like it. You're just gonna take your parry knife and make thin slits all the way up the strawberry. And you don't wanna cut the top off, but you wanna bring your slits all the way to the top, right against that green leafy section, okay? Then I like to pull the top one off, like so the one end off. I like to see the inside of that strawberry. That's just a thing. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to pull it apart a little bit, fan it out just like that. And then I'm gonna stick it directly onto my pound cake. And so we're gonna do that with the rest of the strawberries. So there are the little strawberry pound cake tarts, adorable. And on these other ones, I'm actually just gonna press some more of the chocolate chips because let's just face it, my kids would rather eat the ones with chocolate chips than the ones with strawberries. So now on to the little whoopie pie ones. So you're gonna grab your same bag of icing. You are going to start in the middle spiral around. You're not gonna build up. It's not a cupcake. Then you're gonna get your caramel drizzle. It can be ice cream topping. This is just a drizzle I use on a lot of different things. If it's an ice cream topping, you may want to defrost it in the microwave a little bit to make it softer and then put it into like a Ziploc bag to pipe. So there's that. Top it with a few chocolate chips. Done. So we are gonna do that on all of the rest of these. Those are all done. So as you can see, this is a very versatile recipe. Again, you can make it in a large nine inch round bun pan, cover it in some powdered sugar and be done. That's what I would call a traditional pound cake. These are just a little fancier, a little more fun. I think your kids would enjoy making these. These are great if you're having guests over and you wanna look a little fancy. Um, and these, like I said before, are great for gifts. You package them in individual cello bags by themselves, tie a ribbon and you're done. So, I will attach the recipe to the end of this video. I'll also post it on all social media platforms as you have that as well. I hope you enjoy it. Please, if you make this, comment, email, questions, anything that you need help with, I'm glad to help. I hope you enjoy, thanks.